with us. Oh yeah. How fantastic is that? Welcome to Louisiana. Welcome. <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy to be here. It's great. We're happy to have you. You want to take it off there? You loosen it up? There you go, sir. Good man. So you've been getting some good food? Oh yeah, I had uh, some uh, boudin balls. Yeah? <laughs> they were good. Um, some uh, gumbo. Nice. Yeah, some nice, nice stuff here, man. Good deal. Well, welcome to Lafayette. Thanks for being here. Thanks for gracing us with your presence, and we're excited to talk to you. How about we kick it off with a little bit of background about yourself? Yeah. How'd you get into acting? How'd you get into Harry Potter? How that all started for you? And um, well, I got um, my dad got into acting quite late when he was uh, in his thirties. And he just thought it would be a good idea for me and my older brother to get into acting as well. Uh, I really liked it and I took to it and, and my older brother, he didn't like it at all. So he stopped straight away and uh, I carried on. I uh, started when I was seven and I did like a bunch of TV commercials. I did a, a McDonald's commercial, uh, a bunch of others. And then I didn't, I didn't do anything for about two, two or three years and then I got the audition for Harry Potter. Very nice. Yeah. So was that a big casting call for that? Yeah, yeah, huge. I think they, they, they scouted the whole country, you know, looking for characters for the movies. And um, I originally auditioned for Dudley, um, and I had about four or five auditions for Dudley. Got down to the last two kids. Um, and then they decided to recast, and uh, they said, sorry, you haven't got a part. I was heartbroken. And then um, about three weeks later, they, they asked me to come back and said, will you, will you try out for Goyle? I was like, yeah, of course. Uh, and yeah, good part. Would you like about Goyle? What's that? Would you like about Goyle? What do I like about him? Yeah, what, do you, what, what did you, when you, they give you the character, and what did you? Well, I was quite happy because um, I knew that he was, because when I got the audition for Dudley, I read the first three books quite quickly. Um, really liked them, and um, I realised that Goyle, even though he wasn't, you know, a big speaking part, I knew he was kind of there steadily throughout the series, uh, the three books at the time. So yeah, I was, I was happy because if I'd have got Dudley, then I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gone to Hogwarts or seen the amazing sets and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I was happy to get Goyle, and you know, he's kind of. They're just stupid, aren't they? Just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> They're just stupid goons, man. And they they like food. <laughs> so what was one of your favorite things you had in the in the in the hall that they served you? Uh, the sweets. All the sweets. Yeah, in the, in the first film, when the troll goes into the bathroom, and Quirrell he runs in saying troll in the bathroom. Uh, the, the, I don't know if you actually noticed in the film, but the whole, all the tables were just full up with sweets and lollies, cakes, uh, and most of it was edible, so, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Your eyes must have been just giant, like, just yeah. looking and salivating after all the sweets, huh? They had a lot of um, kids running around crazy, <laughs> high on E-numbers. Where are you originally from, from now? Me? Yes, sir. So, uh, Southwest London. Southwest London? Yeah. Did y'all happen to film around there? Or uh, did, did y'all did, did film do any, uh, I guess, uh, they went to London in the, in the, in the movies. So were they, where were they at in London? Um, were they in your area where you're from? Or? No, no. They, um, Leavesden Studios is only about 45 minute an hour's drive from where I live, um, which is where we did most of the filming. Um, in uh, Deathly Hallows Part One, they did some some stuff in London. But no, they, they was in London a lot, weren't they? With um, the pub and stuff like that, yeah. and the night bus. But I didn't have anything to do with that, so I, I don't really know 
where the locations were. So let's open it up to the q and I want the audience to get involved. What do you say? You all good? You got some questions? Who wants the first one? Yeah, that hand went real quick. I like Hi. What's your name? Krista. My question From where, sorry? Hmm? Where? Moss Bluff. Moss Bluff. Moss Bluff is a cool name. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, out of all the Harry Potter movies, which one was your favorite? Um, my favorite to watch or to to, to, favorite to be in uh, number two because you know the polyjuice potion scene I really enjoyed doing that <laughs> you know having all the attention on me that was that was quite a, quite a cool feeling um, but my uh, my favorite film to watch would be the third one I, I like Prisoner of Azkaban thank you it starts getting dark it's one of my favorites love Prisoner love that shirt they have of him with the with the wanted poster. Awesome. Hi, sir. What's your name? My name's Nathan from Natchitoches. And I had a question in regards to a scene you did. Um, it was, I believe, the Deathly Hallows Part One, where you're flying over. I believe it was Malfoy and the group is flying over. Um, I forget the scene. It's a flame. I remember flames and all that. Was there ever a point in that where you were like, "Okay, we're going to have you flying over this," and you're like, "What?" You're talking about the room of re requirement? Yes. That's what it is? Yeah, but at that point, I'm dead. Oh. Yeah. I thought that was you in that scene. I was well, like, oh. in the book, in the book, Goyle gets saved um, and Crab dies, but, uh, you know, they had lots of complications with the actor who played Crab, um, and he got fired, basically. So what they did, they basically just switched the roles. I, I, they didn't, I wasn't playing Crab, I was still Goyle, but they just made it that Goyle died instead of Crab, and they replaced Crab with um, um, Blaise Zabini, who was played by uh, Louis Cordis. But in, in, in the room of requirement, when we was doing that, it was so hot, man, because they, you know, a lot of the flames were CGI, obviously, yeah. but they did have to have some real flames, and it's like this, hard to explain, it's like this metal, cylinder tube with holes, little holes in the top, and it's like, uh, you know, gas, fire basically, it's almost like a barbecue, but the, the flames actually come up about that high along this tube, and man, it was so hot, with the lights as well, sweating, and climbing up that, that tower, man, that, that was hard work as well, with the heat and the fire, sweating buckets. <laughs> Another question here, you're here. Uh, I'm Felicia, I'm also from Natchitoches. Um, so, do you have any props that you kept as souvenirs, and is there one prop you wish you could have had that you don't? Uh, I'd have liked to have kept my wand, but um, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they were really strict with the wands. They, they, they would have someone, you know, standing by the set. Before you go on set, they'd be like, here's your wand. As soon as you step foot off set, give me the wand back. Oh, wow. Um, but I might have, I might have taken a couple things <laughs> but you know they had they had replicas of all these things so we had slithering rings uh, Al 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 alfonso Cor coron coron um he uh he i think it was his idea he wanted the slitherings to have like slithering jewelry and, and yeah. these rings and tie pins with the snake on um and they had like lots of replica rings so uh, i'm not gonna miss one nice <laughs> Another question here. All right, three for three. I like this. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'm from New Wano. Um, what was your favorite of all the books? Um, the third one. Yeah, Prisoner of Azkaban. Really enjoyed that. I only read the first three. Um, I, I read. I got about halfway through the fourth one, but I, I have a bad habit of starting books and not finishing them. And you know, I've been traveling quite a lot this year, and. There's a, book, there's a book I'm reading about psychopaths. I think I'm only about 20 pages in, but it comes with me every country I go to. It just stays there. It's almost just like my little travel buddy. I don't, I don't, actually, I don't actually read it. It's just kind of there. Nice. Another question? Oh, yeah. There you are. How you doing? What's your name? Uh, my name is Django Hunter, and I was wondering, uh, did you actually get along with Malfoy and... Uh, uh, crabs care like in like they're actual people. <laughs> yeah, uh, me and Tom got on really well, um, and 
me and, me and Jamie, who played Crab, we, we, we really didn't like each other to start off with. Really? Yeah, we didn't get on at all. Uh, we had arguments, N nearly had fights. Um, we just clashed, you know. He was, two, he, he, was a, he was 10 or 11 and I was 13. Um, I was the youngest of four, of four boys. So I, had old, I grew up with older brothers. And you know, as, I, you know, I was, you're, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a baby child, you just want to show off to your older brothers. And um, I was 13, so I was coming of age, and I, you know, felt like I was kind of trying to prove myself a little bit. He was he was younger, much younger than me, and he was from Kilburn, which is quite a rough part of London. And uh, and he had so much attitude, man, and we just clashed and he used to tease me and. Ah uh, yeah, but you know, as we as we got older and we matured, we, we, we became good friends and yeah, that's good. Good question. Do you have one? All right. Who are you cosplaying today, by the way? Um, Eleven from Stranger Things. <laughs> that is cool. June. Bad news. My question is, what was your favorite thing about being on set? Like, were there bloopers that were like really funny or something? There was loads. Yeah, there, there, we was always like making each other laugh and. And when, when, when you get the fit of the giggles on set, it's really hard to stop, you know, you just, it's, um, that's actually like probably one of my, f my fondest memories is when, you, when you're on set and, and you can't stop laughing and you know, you know you're, you're like, you're aware how much money it's costing them per minute, it's something, it's something insane. And there you are, like there's so much pressure, you just can't stop laughing. Um, but I remember though, yeah, th those moments were really funny. Um, yeah, just generally the sets, man, they were just mind-blowing, mind-blowing sets. I remember seeing the Chamber of Secrets, that was, it was like double the size of this room. And, uh, you, know, the, you know the statue, the face yeah. in the Chamber of Secrets? That was totally made up of um, polystyrene. Really? Which uh, you call styrofoam, <coughs> right? Sure. Yeah, the, the whole thing was, and, it was, and uh, they painted it to make it look like stone. I just remember seeing it, it's like, wow. And the, the Forbidden Forest, you know, they built that. It was just, yeah, crazy, crazy sets. Nice. Good question, thank you. Your name? Maddie. Hi. Uh, Lafayette. <laughs> okay, so who was like the class clown? Who like never memorized their lines and just always like goofed off on set, in your opinion? Jamie, Jamie was quite, he, he was, he was quite funny and he messed around a lot. Um, I can't really think, it's, you know, it's such a long time ago really now. It's, it's, you know, I, I remember Tom Felt, when we did the Chamber of Secrets, um, uh, the scene in the Slytherin common room where um, Harry and Rod have turned into me and uh, Crabbe and Goyle, um, I don't think Tom realized he had like a, a ton of dialogue for that scene. He, he either didn't realise or, or, or you know, he just didn't bother learning <laughs> the lines. But we, we got on set and he didn't know any of his lines. Um, which was quite funny. Um, I don't think the producers were that happy. Um, and I think it kind of delayed the, uh, the, the, the shoot for that scene by a, a day or two. Um, and I think he actually... I think he actually, he actually, because when you go on set, they give you sides every morning, which is just basically like a shrunk down version of the script, yeah. the scenes you'll be doing that day. I think he cut them out and he stuck them to something. And he was like sometimes reading the lines as he was going. <laughs> he made a crib sheet and he just kind of. From what I can this remember, what from what I can remember, <laughs> my memory might be a bit hazy. It's not good. Good question, thank you. Get another one over here. Your name, sir? Hi, my name's Levi. Hi, uh, New Iberia, and I was wondering what your thoughts were on Fantastic Beast and part two, how they're going to tie it into uh, Hogwarts. You know, I, if, I'm, if I'm brutally honest, you know, it's, it's wizards and, and, and magic, it's not, I'm not really into like, the fantasy uh, genre that much, um, not like sci-fi, I'm not really into that kind of stuff, I'm into different movies. Um, I started watching Fantastic Beasts. I, I think I got about twenty minutes or half an hour in, and uh, and I yeah, I just stopped, I just stopped. 
Yeah. <laughs> but I was tired. I was tired. I think, and I, you know, I was. But uh, no, it was good. I mean, I think uh, the guy is it Newt, the guy who plays. Yeah, Eddie Redmayne, I think, is his name. He's yeah. awesome. He, you know, like, he's such a naturalist. He's a brilliant actor. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it another go. But uh, yeah. You were busy. You've been doing other things. You've been uh, doing some MMA, right? Yeah. How's yeah, that going? I do, I do a little bit. Um, it's just amateur MMA, you know. So it's I'm, I had my last fight in February, uh, which I won. Them. Well, I've had two now, and I've won, and I won them both. But they were both points decisions, so they uh, they could have gone either way. Um, yeah, it's just more like a hobby, really. To be honest. Um, what have, you, what, have, what have you been studying? What, what martial arts, what techniques, what have you been doing? Uh, well, I, I studied traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu for um, six years. I think, I think about six years. Um, and then I always, I, I told myself, as soon as I get my black, because my dad was a pro boxer, so, I mean, he, he showed us how to punch when we was, you know, how to defend ourselves when we were small kids. So I always grew up looking at photos of my dad boxing and stuff like this, and, Two of my older brothers both bots, so it was in our family. So I knew that at some point in my life I wanted to have a fight, and it would have been a boxing fight. But then I got into martial arts. I started watching UFC and really like the cage fighting. So I thought, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. When I get my black belt, I'm gonna have a cage fight. Um, so I did, yeah, or two now. Big ups for the wins. Sorry, I said big ups for your wins. Congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah, thank you. Who's got the next question? Where are we at? Hands up. All right. Thank you all. Your name, sir? Sean. Uh, my question is, since you've started doing these conventions, have you met anyone that you're a really big fan of? Um, well, I met Ban, you know, today, um, yesterday, and that was, I mean, I grew up on Jack, on Jack Ars, Jack Ars, <laughs> um, and that was, that was quite, that was really cool. Uh, who else? There was someone recently. You know, with me, because I'm a big rap fan, so I, I get kind of uh, I get kind of starstruck when I bump into rappers, and I, I've got I bump into a lot of rappers randomly. I'm into uh, British hip hop, a lot of UK rap, yeah. and I've, I've met a few of those, some of my my idols. And I was in Rochester, New York, a few months back. I was in the lobby, and for anyone who knows rap music, um, I've heard his voice. I know that voice, man. That, sound, that sounds like KRS-One. Nice. And I was like, what? And I looked round and this KRS-One was just like over there. Oh, fantastic. I was just, I was just like, I totally fanboyed, man. I just went up to <laughs> Can I get a picture? And uh, yeah, so I've got a picture of KRS-One, which is, he's just like... You know, legend. Legend, man, yeah. <laughs> who's, who's some of your other favorite artists? Rap? Yeah, sure. Oh, wow, so many. I know Grime's really big in the UK. So. Who? Grime. Well, yeah, I like, I like a bit of Skepta, you know, and Wiley, but I, I like, I like, um, I like the old stuff. I like a lot of 90s rap, you know, I like, obviously, your you Wu-Tang, uh, there's just so many. I like Action Bronson, Rock Marciano, there's loads. Uh, Nonfiction is probably one of my favourite rap bands. Nonfiction, right. so it's got um, Gore-Tex, Ill Bill, Necro, uh, Sabak Red. Wow, you're going deep. I know, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm a fanatic, so... I like that. I didn't know that about you. Now I know. Yeah. You had a question? Yes, sir. Your name? My name is Stuart. I'm from Eunice. Hi. Uh, on the Chamber of Secrets, when the Harry and Ron take the Polyjuice Potion, how was it pretending to be Harry and Ron, who were pretending to be Goyo and Crab? Yeah, it was, it was tricky. Yeah, it was, it was tricky. And um, it was quite a long process, uh, get, get, doing that and getting it organized, because the producers, they, 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 they were sort of unsure whether me and Jamie, they grabbed whether we could do it. So they, they wanted us to do a show and tell. So what they made us do, we had to go to um, Warner Brothers screening room uh, in town, which is like a really small cinema, but these amazing leather sofas. And they made us watch the first movie about 10 times in the space of like a week or two weeks. Oh wow. Just to study Dan and Rupert uh, their mannerisms and their body language and stuff like that, facial expressions, uh, and we had a um, uh, like a drama coach there, so we practiced it and practiced it, and then we did the show and tell for the producers. 
producers liked it, and then they they they, they went with it. Um, but yeah, it was quite hard. It was quite hard. I remember it being tricky because this, yeah, because like you said, it's 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 Harry pretending to be Goyle. You know. But <laughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It's good. But another question over here. Another set of movies in the future. Would you play a teacher or a villain? It was an option. Villain. <laughs> <laughs> I think you always, always the villain, man. You have a lot, a lot more fun playing the villain. Nice. There's more you can do with it. Wait, another question. All right. Yes, sir. Your name. Um, um, my name is Dax, and uh, this is kind of unrelated to Harry Potter and all that, but my sister's a big fan of Harry Potter, and I was wondering if it was fine if I could get you to say hi to Coda to my sister. S say hi what? To my sister. Yeah, but where is she? Uh, she's coming right at home. Dakota? Yeah, uh, yeah, I can do that. Want to say hi to Dakota? Is she, is she, oh, are we doing like live? Oh, doing hi, live right now? Hi, Dakota. <laughs> How you doing? Hang on, I'm going to do one better. Let me see this. Hang tight. Hang on. Is it still filming? We're totally walking up. It zoomed in. Let's zoom out. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? It's a shame you can't be here. It would have been, ni been nice to meet you, but... Uh... So this is Josh. Hi, Dakota. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe we'll uh, bump into each other another time. There you go. There you go, Dakota. Y'all give it up for that. Take it easy. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Look, there's everybody. You can watch this later and see what's going on. There's your brother. There's another gentleman. I think it's your dad. There you go. All right. Next question. Where are we at? Who's got one? What's a what's a what's a Harry Potter question that you've been dying to know? What's you may have the answer, right? Like the. I was wondering, uh, out of everybody from the cast, is there anybody that you're still keep in touch with? Um. I, I, a handful of them, yeah. We are friends with, uh, you know, um, Chris Rankin, who played Percy Weasley. We're friends on Facebook and stuff. Louis Cordis, who played Blazer Beanie, we're good friends. Um, Tolga, he played Karkaroff's aide and Crumb's uh, sidekick in the fourth movie. Um, when I see Stanislav, we don't sort of stay in contact, but when we see each other, we, we get on pretty well. So yeah, a handful of them, but you know, Tom, I haven't seen or spoke to Tom in a long time, nor Dan Rupert or Emma, but you know, they're off doing big Prom. stuff, big stuff now. So. You've been in some other uh, films as well. What are some other uh, projects you've been in maybe they don't know about? Um, I've been in a few sort of low budget, independent British films. Um, two, well, one's, one's about to get distribution, two are still waiting on distribution. That's the thing with these sort of micro-budget, low-budget movies. It's hit or miss whether it actually gets completed and released. Um, but some nice parts. I've uh, done a, a bit of TV as well. There's a, a TV series called Marcella um, on ITV. I think you can get it on Netflix now, Marcella Season 2. Um, so I was in all eight episodes of that. That, that aired in February. Um, so yeah, yeah, bits and pieces. This year's been quite quiet. I've only had two jobs this year. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. You've been in the remake of the Robin Hood coming out very soon, right? This is, I get asked this, like, Is this lot. true? Yeah, yeah, I was. Long story short, um, I, I knew the director, his name was Otto Barthurst, and we worked together when I was a kid. He called me in to try out for Guy Gisborne, who um, is, is like a, a big part. Um, didn't work out for that. Three months later, he said, will you come back and try for this part called Righteous, which was meant to be like three scenes, three or four scenes at the start of the movie, then he gets shot in the throat with an arrow, dead. I was like, okay, well, I didn't get the part I wanted, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because it was like a week or two weeks in Budapest. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. So we did it, uh, and I got an email from Otto maybe two or three months ago. He said that we kind of had to reshoot that whole, um, start to the movie because the producers, I don't know, there was some talk about the producers weren't happy with the way it was. Um, and he, I'm not in it basically, cut the part out. So, 
So yeah, so I'm, I'm not, you won't actually see me in it. So. Which is a shame, but it happens, you know. It's part, it's part, of, the, part of the game, you know. It's like Rick Mayo, who played Peeves. Uh, Peeves the Poltergeist in Harry Potter. He actually filmed his scenes and got paid and everything, um, and they, they cut him out. You don't see Peeves the Poltergeist at all. One of those things. Yeah. It happens. Are there uh, other uh, big roles coming up or any other fights you're training for right now? Or? Nothing in the minute, no. No? Nothing in the pipeline. Um, you know, you just don't know what's around the corner. I won't, I won't be fighting again this year. I'm thinking about next year. Have you traveled to any other uh, places in the UK or maybe in the States to do some more training? No, no. To be honest, I, 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 I train every day, most days, you know, whether it's running or weights or, you know, circuits. I, I, I have to do something every day. Yeah. Um, so I haven't really been doing any, since my last fight in February, I haven't been doing any, any combat sports. Um, you know, it, I, I do. I love martial arts and, I, and, I, and I, I do take it kind of seriously, but only when I'm really preparing for a fight. So yeah. I, like to have, I like to have three months or four months prior to a fight where I've got nothing scheduled, like no conventions, no, no like audition, and then I can just focus 100% on, on, on the training. Well, I don't know if you know this, but Lafayette, Louisiana is a pretty much a big hotbed for MMA. Really? Daniel Cormier is from here. Daniel Cormier is from, uh, Daniel Cormier is from uh, here, also... Uh, who else we have from here? Um, oh, what's his name? <laughs> I'm drawing a blank, but we actually have, um, uh, who is it, Crazy Tim Crater as well. He was an MMA fighter as a uh, school year. And then, um, oh, wow, I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, any MMA fans in here that can help me out and not let me leave me hanging dry? Um, it's from here, bro. What's the gentleman's name? Sorry. Sorry? Yeah. I'm going to think of the name, but anyway. It is. I drew a blank. But MMA is really big here. And I'll give you some more information about that because they actually have some really great schools here. Yeah. And some trainers. It's a brutal sport, man. It's. But that's what I think that's the beauty of it. It's so unpredictable. You know, box. I love boxing. But it's. You know. With MMA, it can, just, it can turn around just like that, you know. Yeah. It's a beautiful sport. And your father was a rugby player, correct? Yeah, he was a pro rug rugby player, um, pro boxer for a while. Um, he actually, when he was in his professional rugby career, he, he did a trial for Kansas City Chiefs. Really? Uh, yeah, American football, and uh, he didn't get he didn't get selected because he didn't he didn't you know Americans you know you grew up with the game and so he he just didn't understand the rules. He said when he went when he went to Kansas, Kansas City. They give him a, like a rule book, like a playbook, which is, he said it was like about this big. And he just didn't understand. My dad's dyslexic and yeah, it kind of didn't work out, but yeah. We got any more Harry Potter? Just getting more questions with Josh? Behind you, Matt. Where are we at? Hiding from the back. If, yeah, if my back's turned, hey Matt, come and get my question. And I'll come to you. What's your name? Kendra from Lafayette. Hello. Have you ever been to the Harry Potter world? Studios. If so, how was your experience? No, I've never been. I'd like to go. Um, I've only done the uh, the studio tour in in Leavesden in the UK, which was really cool. But yeah, I, I'd like to go to Orlando. I've been to Orlando, but when I was ten. <laughs> Before it was there. Yeah. Womp womp. It happens. We have another question up here. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm John from Lafayette. Hi, John. Did did things ever get emotional on the very last day you ever acted in the Harry Potter movies? Um, not for me. I mean, it, yeah, it was all a bit. I, I personally, I was a bit sad. Um, I don't think it. I, it didn't register, you know, because we were. I'd we'd been ten years on and off. Uh, I didn't quite register when I when I left that day that I wouldn't be going back. It's, you know, it's because it's it just been the norm for, for 10 years. Uh, it didn't really hit me in, until maybe a few months after. I was like, okay, there's not going to be another one. And plus my character's dead now. So I definitely won't be coming back if they didn't want to make more. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, like I said, yeah, it was a like, delayed uh, reaction for me. It was kind of, 
Yeah, I've, I've fond memories of it now. It's, you know, it was a fantastic experience. It's such an awesome thing to be a part of. Even though it was a, it was a small part, it was, I, I feel like I was just a small part of something uh, incredible. There you go. I like that. You have a question? My name's Sophie. I'm from Lafayette. And what's your question? Did you like flying on the brooms? Oh. I didn't get to fly on the brooms. What? Yeah. In, uh, in the books, Crabbe and Goyle play Quidditch. I'm pretty sure they do. Um, and they, they, we didn't in the films. Um, so yeah, I didn't actually get... I wanted to do it, but um, I heard from various people who did do it that um, the broomsticks were not very comfortable. To, oh. Uh, and if, especially if you was a guy. <laughs> um, yeah, but then they designed these special seats. Uh, like they, I think they molded like their butts. <laughs> they molded butts? Yeah, I think they molded butts and made like custom seats. For this was towards the end, I think, of the series, um, because I think at the start, this is from what I've heard, at the start it was just like a um, like a bicycle seat. Okay. Uh, which I heard was very very uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, then they started molding people's. But, yeah, yeah. And, and made seats. So maybe you dodged a bullet, you know what I mean? Maybe, yeah. maybe it was a good thing yeah. Yeah. that maybe. you did not get that chance. But. I mean, I would have liked to because I, I would have been more featured, but it, it is what it is. You know, they, uh, they, had to, they had so much to cram in. So, you know, even though Crab and Gore had slightly bigger, slightly more to do in the books, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's understandable that they had to shave everything down a bit. You always had great f facial expressions that would come across the screen when you're behind uh, Draco and doing stuff. So it always came across really well. I always thought that was really cool. Thank you. The way you emoted and you were like just doing your thing, you know? Well, I had to do it well, didn't I? Because you didn't really have any lines, so. Yeah, but you did it well. Like, you, you, it came across like, I'm intimidating, I'm gonna yeah. do my thing, I'm slithering. Oh, thank you. Appreciate yeah, you own that. Give it up for Josh right now, man. That's some good stuff. He didn't get to get on the board, but we know that it's okay because he saved himself because it could have been bad. We don't want that. We don't want that to happen. Any more questions? Anything else? Oh, y'all are hiding from me. All right. Your name? Madison. New Orleans. What's your favorite spell? Ah. Um. I don't actually know that many. Obviously no Avada Kedavra because I used that in the last film. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just go with that one. I like that one. It's kind of Avada Kedavra, even though it's like the death one, isn't it? Yeah. Hello. Hi. Have you taken any official Harry Potter quizzes or any at all? Are you actually a Slytherin? Uh, oh. No, I'm a Gryffindor. <laughs> yeah. On the, on the Pottermore website, I'm a Gryffindor, yeah. I wanted to be a Slytherin. <laughs> you were trying to answer the best you could to be Slytherin, yeah. like really getting into it, like yeah. what would they say? Yeah, and he still came out dripping door, so. <laughs> we got any more? Any more questions? Another hand up? Got the wrap up shop. Get it in while you can. Uh, aside from Louisiana, what's your favorite place you've ever visited and why? Um, in, in, in the States or, or? Anywhere. In the world. The world. That's a good question. I really like I really like Budapest. Budapest is an amazing place. I just love just walking around and getting lost in Budapest. It's so interesting. I like Paris too. Um, but I, I love the States the best. I, just, I, have, I have a fascination with it. Um, and I'd, I'd love to live here at some point. Well, I kind of feel I kind of feel like at home here. It's weird. You're in Lafayette? Well, just anywhere really in the States. <laughs> Lafayette, Lafayette as well. Like, I just, just saying. You know, it's hot bed for MMA. I just love it. I just love it. I just remember the other name, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Of course. He's from here. Of course, yeah. It's a butt of mine. I couldn't remember his name to save my life. It came back. It came back to me. See? What's that memory spell that comes back? What's the one? Uh... Yeah, we all know. No, no, no. <laughs> you guys should know. I, I would think. Well, I should know. <laughs> it's all good. So, you have a question? Yes. Have you ever played any of the Harry Potter video games? Oh. 
Have I only played them? Yeah. Uh, I'm not a big, I'm not into uh, video games at all. Um, well, I say at all. I it just went, I went through like sort of phases as a as a child. I always kind of had a PlayStation, but I never really. I could. I'd get into a game for a month or two, like Grand Theft Auto, and then it would just fizzle out, and then I, I never. I never really got into oh, the whole online gaming thing. I think it, that's that's that was, it was maybe just a bit. I was a bit before that. Um, but I think if I had, then I would be mega, mega into it. But no, I just, yeah, it's just not my thing. Same here. Get it one more? All right. You gotta prime the pump for these questions, man. All of a sudden, y'all are hitting them now. I like this. The Patronus Bell has always been um, symbolically linked with an animal. What would you feel would be your animal if you had a Patronus? Well, I, I, I've got been asked this before and I, all I can say really is like my favorite I, I like I like apes I like I like nice. silverback gorilla is my favorite oh. animal so I'd like to think it was that um, you know that'd be amazing to see portrayed <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine when you do that and that ape just kind of came like, come come like <laughs> crazy we any more about to wrap it up get it in Josh final thoughts um, anything you want to leave with the audience? No, it's just, uh, you know, thanks for coming and I uh, really appreciate you guys having me and um, I hope I get to come back again at some point because we got one more. So our photographer, our staff photographer, Brandon, just snuck up on me and said, <laughs> I have a question, don't end it yet. <laughs> He's legit, I love this kid. What you got? I was just wondering, uh, where are you from? Because I hear the accent, and I was just wondering, England? Yeah, I'm from, Lo yeah, from London, uh, southwest London. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. On behalf of the staff, myself, all the volunteers, the thanks, audience. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming to life. Yeah, Thank you. Y'all really get it done. Appreciate it. Get it for God. <laughs> Seriously.